You see this, this right here, that's Devin. Devin from Make Anything. He's making a Plinko puck for the Matter Hackers meetup that's coming up uh, on Thursday, essentially. Uh, oh, he's so good, he's so good. It's like springy and it's got a weighted thing and a bearing and his logo and oh, I need to create my own Plinko puck so that I can put it down the big Plinko board. I have some ideas. I've got 3D printers. I've got a full spectrum Muse laser cutter. Let's combine those and model something in Fusion 360 that's worthy of, of at least going down the same board as Devin's creation. I mean, it's already wonderful. I'm Joel. This is 3D Printing Nerd. This episode of 3D Printing Nerd is sponsored by Matter Hackers. All right, we gotta think. First, we need to design something in Fusion 360, and then we'll have to print the parts. We'll have to take something and make it a vector, and then bring it into the full spectrum Muse software, Retina Engrave, and then we'll have to combine everything, and we'll have to see if it works. Let's dive into Fusion 360. I've got the puck designed already, and we're in Fusion 360, but let's dive into the sketch a little bit, just so I can show you how it was done. There's my sketch. One of the issues is that the dimensions were given in imperial units, 3.5 inches, 0.5 inches, and 0.125 inches for diameter, thickness, and edge features, such as fillets and chamfers. And uh, in 3D printing, I deal a lot in metric. So what's really cool about Fusion is you put in like here, 3.5 inches slash two. That means uh, the, the radius of this puck is gonna be three and a half inches divided by two. Fusion does the calculation. It gives me 44.45 millimeters. In fact, on the height, I just put in 0.5 in, which is inches, and that gives me 12.70. Cool. You may be wondering what the heck is going on here. What I want is to have a puck in the center that's laser cut. And it's gonna be three millimeters tall. I've already measured that. And it's gonna be 24.5 millimeters plus 10.5 millimeters, giving us 35 millimeters in radius. So it's gonna be 70 millimeters in diameter and three millimeters tall, which means it's gonna fit. It's gonna fit right in there. There we go. And if I remove this, there we go. So this is the puck. And right in here this space is where it's going to fit but what about this what's this extra piece right here well if we dive back into the sketch what i'm doing we what i'm doing is revolving this little section right here around and it's what's going to happen is it's going to hopefully carry forward this angle and it's going to be a little secondary color that keeps the wood disc in the puck it's going to be right there so if i stop the sketch and i go over here and i remove this body there it is it's a super duper easy print super duper easy tiny little print i print this part separately and that's it i think we're going to print the puck on the raise 3d n2 plus we're going to print the little secondary color this thing right here on the Ultimaker 3 using High 5 Blue. Well, on that wood puck, we're gonna need to, uh, we're gonna go use a laser cutter. We start out printing the outer part of the puck on the Raze 3D N2 Plus using Matter Hacker's Build Series PLA, and it's a natural color. It looks great. The Ultimaker 3 with the Protopasta High 5 Blue PLA is actually doing a fantastic job with that little inner piece, and the layer lines are disappearing. I can't wait for this print to be done. For the Muse laser cutter, I've got the Joelbot image in the center as a raster graphic, and then I have the 70 millimeter circle as a vector. So what the Muse will do is burn and etch the image of the Joelbot into the wood, and then once that image is etched on, it will cut the wood because it cuts on the vectors, and it'll cut that 70 millimeter circle. It's just hypnotic to watch. If you ever get your hands on a laser cutter, you'll know what I mean. Once the Muse was done and we got them out of the machine, I had to sand them down a little bit. What you can do is put tape on top of the wood and then have the laser burn onto that and any of the, the little 
the burning artifacts that happen when you do this, uh, it transfers to the tape rather than the wood. And so what I had to do is just run some sandpaper over it. Because the details in the etched Joel bot are so tiny, the sawdust from the sanding actually got into it. And so I grabbed a can of air and I blew it out. And I swear to you, this is one of the most satisfying things I've ever watched. Again, here it is in slower motion. With the puck from the Raze 3D, with the wooden Joel bot from the Muse, and with the inner part from the Ultimaker 3, so it was time to put them all together. I did a test fit, and everything test fit just fine, and so I needed to make this attachment more permanent, and that's when I went to grab my glue. I glued the wood piece in first, and then once that was done, I added some glue to the inner part, and I glued that down. I added a little bit too much glue as you can tell and so I grabbed a paper towel and I just wiped it up and it didn't detract from the image at all. In fact, I, it could have accentuated it. Maybe this is something awesome. Maybe I should get some epoxy resin. I don't know. Hey, look, Devin, mine rolls too. Oh, but wait, wait a second. I have an idea. All right, here's my idea. Look at this. This is the Pulse XE from Matter Hackers. They sent the Pulse XE, the print dry, and some of their acclaimed Nylon X filament. I had some projects planned that I wanted to use Nylon X for because it's tough. This is a special occasion, and I need to make my Plinko uh, disc, Plinko puck, my Plinko puck. I can't believe I forgot about that. And Devin just upped the cool factor. So what if instead of standard PLA like this one, we take a high five blue ring and we take a lasered Joel bot and then we make this whitish, semi-transparentish part in the Nylon X. I think, I think that would be interesting. So let's get this out of the box and let's print us a puck. There it is, and it comes with this giant box. All right, uh, I'm gonna get this set up. I'm gonna download Matter Control. I'm gonna get on my laptop, and then we're gonna print us a puck. Okay, a little bit has changed on the desk. The print dry in the Nylon X has been moved over to right here, and the pulse is right here, and I applied the feet. The feet aren't attached to the bottom of the printer, and so if you pick it up, the feet sometimes fall off. I probably will glue them. I've got out my laptop. It's updated, and I don't think Windows is gonna reboot itself at any time soon. I'm going through a new matter control setup scenario, and I'm gonna be printing via USB using Matter Control version 2.0, which I was sent a link to. So I'm gonna set this up, don't worry, I'm still going, we're gonna get printing here in just a sec. I'm having some issues with setup here, and this is the Pulse XE and the belt, uh, it's, it's flippity floppity. So let me tighten that up. This little uh, screw over here. So if the belts are loose, you turn it, and you turn it, and it tightens them up. Let's see, okay, okay, there we go. I think we're good to go, sweet. It's going, Matter Hackers, Matter Control is loaded up and a USB cable connected to the printer is printing. So far, uh, I haven't used Matter Control in such a long time. Uh, they've done a lot of upgrades, version 2.0 is looking pretty good. I was told it's a 64-bit application, which, I mean, two thumbs up, right there. Two 32-bit thumbs, which means 64 bits. That's a terrible joke, but, it's now printing the Nylon X, and it looks like, let's see if I can get stats. Almost done with the first layer, and it's at 1%. The nozzle's at 255, and the bed is at 55, and it is a Gerolite bed, and you saw that I took it off. Okay, well, let's hope this goes down great. Again, it's been drying in the print dry, and hopefully this standard puck will now have a friend in a puck like this, so hopefully it all works out. Two hours later. Ooh, is it done? 
Hey, look at that. The print appears to be finished. Okay, the Pulse Homes up on Z and a home's back on Y, and so that's why the bed's in the back. Let's move it to the front, and it's a removable spring steel from Build Tech, of course, and it's got the Gearlite surface. So, there we go, look at that, let's see. Oh, that is satisfying. Wow, Gearlite, wow, Gearlite loves to hold on to nylon. Holy cow. Let's see, let's see if this fits in. Ooh, <laughs> I don't even need any glue. I don't even need any glue for that. Wow, that's in there. There we go. Let's see if this fits. Get in there. Oh, oh, yes, <laughs> no glue necessary. Oh, it's perfect. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, that looks so good. And here. Here they are, close up, close up right there. You can see that. Okay, we're done. Look at that, a, uh, oh, by the way, yes, I do look different. I'm wearing a different shirt. I did get a haircut. I did eat some food and I did have some water to drink. So time has passed, you can tell. But more importantly, these are ready to go. Oh, this one in the, this one in the Nylon X is really nice. This one though in the regular PLA is good though as well. I'm really happy with the way these turned out. Uh, so let's talk about this. The Plinko board at the Matter Hackers meetup. It's May 3rd, it's a Thursday and it's at Matter Hackers headquarters. There's going to be tacos, there's gonna be drinks, there's gonna be Plinko and prizes. Devin from Make Anything is gonna be there. Oh, in fact, in fact, <laughs> my friend Courtney McNerdy will probably be there. Courtney is, let's see, we'll put a picture over here. Courtney, Courtney is awesome. Really good friend of mine. She should be there. I highly suggest you show up. In fact, I'll put a link to her Twitter down below. You should probably follow her on Twitter as well and give her a shout out and just say high five Courtney from Joel. That'd be great. Look at this, we're set. We are set for the Matter Hackers meetup. This is gonna be great. Um, I don't know, let me know if you wanna know more about the Pulse XE. I mean, I've got plenty of Prusa machines and it's it's an i3 design. Uh, it looks very similar to the Prusa. There is a lot of things that are different about it and um, I don't know, if you wanna know more about it, leave a comment. Let me know that's what you wanna hear about. If you wanna hear more about the Nylon X, if you wanna hear more about the Pucks, if you wanna hear more about the Ultimaker S5 that's gonna be shown off at the Matter Hackers meetup, just let me know, any of that stuff, it's gonna be great. I really hope to see you there. Oh man, thanks for watching, thanks for making it this far. If you're not subscribed, please do, and then ring that bell to be notified when cool stuff like this is uploaded. If you'd like to support what we do here on the channel, there are a ton of links in the description. Feel free to click any one of those any number of times. It directly benefits me and uh, gives me, I believe, 8% more happiness, which, which is entirely possible. Beyond all that, don't forget to hug each other more, because I love you guys, as always. High five.